The Meddlesome Meeples present The Quest Report with Matt and Richard. So on this episode of The Quest Report, Richard and I are going to be talking about a little game uh, called Robin, which was designed by Frederick Moyerson, the same mm -hmm. designer who uh, behind Saboteur, a very popular party card game. Um, and this is released via Flatline Games. So in Robin, the idea is it's, it's, it's a kind of a card collection game, isn't it? Where you are trying yeah. to get uh, a number of cards with the same symbol. Now you need seven cards to win the, of, the, of that symbol to win the game. The way you do that is you uh, start off with a few cards. I think it's uh, three or four. And, and then they're the slippiest cards in the world. They are the slippiest cards in the world because these cards are plastic. I put them so, in two little piles because the one pile, it just goes everywhere. Yeah. But they look like they'll last well, don't they? They seem like they're constantly trying to escape from your hands. Yeah, they will just go everywhere. They're very easy to shuffle though. Yeah, yeah, they basically shuffle themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, if you put them on the side for five minutes, you'll come back and they'll have shuffled themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right off the table. Um, <laughs> So, yes, in this game you have a little board which will have different slots on them. Now, at one side you've got um, Sherwood Forest, and at the other side you've got Nottingham Castle. Yeah, so it's like how far away from civilization you are at yeah. the time, isn't it? And uh, how close to danger as well. There's basically more to steal there, uh, but here you've got less you have to give up, like in taxes. Yeah. So, at the. At the uh, it's also very much a push your luck system, isn't it? Because yeah. at the. Uh, closer to the castle, you've got more mission cards that you can draw. Which now the mission cards is six types of mission cards, and there there's symbols that you're trying to collect to make right. a full set. But the more of those that you get, the more you then have to put into what's called the contribution stack. Contribution. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, whereas the closer you are to Sherwood Forest, the less cards you draw, but then you're able to instead of putting cards in the contribution stack. You're able to draw cards from the contribution yeah, stack, aren't you? Steal. Which means that it's very good because then you can choose a card. Yeah, actually, no, no, you don't steal. When you're over here, putting them in the contribution thing is like. So you get to get a load of stuff there, and then you put that in the contribution. It's like you're giving to the poor. Yeah, that's you're what I like from about the rich it. And giving to yeah, the Yeah, so this is like stealing from the rich, and that is like giving to the poor. But when you're back here, you're not doing any stealing, but you are getting cards when that have been given to the poor. Yeah. So it's like you're poor when you're over here. And yeah. you get the benefit from the stealing. Because you're one of the poor people in Sherwood Forest that Robin's helping, and when you're close mm. to the castle, you're then one of the merry men that is stealing from the rich to give to the yeah. poor. Yeah, so I think got... you're pretty merry wherever you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on which you drink. Um, yeah. It's quite a nice little uh, system, that. You've got your little meeple, which will move uh, to represent you, that moves oh, yeah. up and down. Oh, yeah, meeples. And with the cards, the mission stacks that you get, on your turn... You'll do three things, won't you? You'll draw however many cards from the mission stack that you're required to draw. Yeah. Give as many cards as you're required to give to the contribution stack. And then you've got a choice. There are certain special action cards which you can play that might let you exchange meeples on the board. Yeah. Uh, swap hands with another player. Steal a card from another player. Peek at another player's hand. Mm. There's various different things. Some of the special action cards are passive because they just count as two of the symbols that you need for a set instead of mm -hmm. one. Um, some of... Then, so you can either play one of these special action cards, or you can pl play or put down for trade rather um, a card. Now, you put down a card for trade face up, and then everyone else that's playing will, if they decide they want to trade with you, put a card face down. And so, when you can see who's trading, everyone then returns those cu cards over simultaneously face up so that you can see. Right, this is what I'm offering. So it's kind of like you're offering blindly, not knowing what the other players are offering for trade. Yeah. And then the player whose turn it is, the active player, will choose one of your those cards to trade with. It has to do what's on it. Yeah, because on each of these cards that you'll be trading, it's got a, uh, sets of arrows. Now, you might have like one black arrow pointing backwards towards the forest and a couple of white arrows pointing forwards towards the castle. Now, you would have to then do all of those. Now, if it's those three sets, that means you've got to move three different meeples yeah. to move in line with those directions. If the arrows are really close together, then it's one meeple 
moving two twice. spaces. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the person that you traded with, so not the active player, will uh, make those moves first, and then the active player will move uh, make the moves on his card. Yeah. So basically, the one that you put down, if they take that, that still gets used first. Yeah. So yeah, it basically decides what you want to happen. But and it's interesting, isn't it? Because you, if you're the active player and you've got multiple choices, then you can choose who to trade with. If mm -hmm. only one person trades, then you have to make that trade. So that's not always a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, but as well as the symbols on the cards, which you will use to make your set of seven, there's also like a little token on top of the various spaces that your meeple can be on, the various locations. Now that will count as one of those symbols for your hand if you finish your turn on that space. So it's, it's a very simple little game to learn, it is, yeah. very simple little game to play, and it can play very fast as well as we find out. Ooh, we yeah, we it. played with our friend Tim and he just suddenly so, won. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, so was there as well, but Tim won. Yeah. Like, <laughs> lightning fast. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> he just collected seven of these blue ones, hasn't he? Seven of the blue symbol. Yeah, which I think, was that the, that was the sending messages missions or something like that. But yeah, he, he won that very quickly. Mm. Um, so there is quite a strong random element in this, isn't there? What's your yeah. thoughts on this game, Richard? Well, I like the fact that when you move the meeples, mm -hmm. um, there's nothing on the cards to say which meeple it has to be. Yeah. So basically, it's not us moving up and down. Um, we just are all playing cards that move the meeples. <laughs> so basically, you're like you're like in the tides. You mm. you don't know where you're going to end up. Um, there are symbols that are put on each place, aren't they, which count yeah. towards your total. So it does make a difference where you are. Um, yeah, I. I was glad that it worked out being so fast mm. as it was, um, because you do want a little game like this to mm. be fast. We were talking about Biblios before, weren't we, and that seems to be always the same length, mm. like whatever happens. Whereas this one, I don't know what it would be like if you played a really long game of it, but the short game was, I, I don't think it ever could last very long, because I think somebody would get seven in not too long because you, you don't have to give up cards you don't want to do yet you yeah. can choose which ones to take so if you're going for a certain one basically you're just trying to do it faster than the others I can't see a game of this lasting more than 30 minutes 20 minutes 25 minutes should be fine for this game yeah and thematically and it, it works well that's what I think it does there work two well things about it. Um, I think it's got that thematic feel as you say mm. um, and I think it's got a nice fast game if this was more than 30 minutes I really don't think I'd ever bring it to the table because I think mm. doing what we're doing in this game for a short time is fine and it's fun. If it was a longer game, I think you'd start to feel bogged down and want to do something else. Yeah. Um, so it's the right length. Uh, the components are quite nice. The card, I like the little, uh, again, like with Biblios, a little box that opens like a book uh, with the magnetic yeah, strip Yeah, uh, this one doesn't look like anything, but it's... It's sort of a nice little box for a little game, isn't it? Yeah. Um, as I say, it was originally designed for a company, um, and it was to do with social welfare. It was then was re it? The yeah, it was then re oh, yeah. to be a Robin Hood theme. Mm. And it used to be conservatives in the welfare state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I do think the, the theme of it works well with the way the game is played. Well, if it's called Robin Hood, then you want something very fundamental about the game mm. to be about that theme. About taking it, yeah, of take one thing and the giving of another. About stealing, trying not to get caught, that kind of stuff. And mm. you don't want it to just be a random card game with a Robin Hood theme yeah. plastered on the front. And this does feel like, very fundamentally in the mechanics, it is a Robin Hood game. So I don't fine. think that this is a game that's going to you know, rock anybody's world in the sense that they're going to buy it and they're going to go, oh wow, this game is amazing. But I do think that when you play this, you will go, you know, it's it's fun. It's you a go, fun twenty yeah. fun twenty minutes, isn't it? Yeah. And you go, hmm. And you go, hmm. Now I've got to pick up those cards from the floor that have just flown out of my head. <laughs> yeah. Really. But um, yeah, so I would say, as a light filler game, as a quick game, this is fun, and I think this would work brilliantly with children. Yeah, if they can hold on to the cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might be hard to teach. My kids' fingers are always a bit sticky, so that's probably going to be fine. Actually, yeah, these cards might... Yeah, let them play it. It's, it's and quite clean if you if you play with kids. Actually, yeah. Yeah, you so, can wipe these clean. Uh, so my kids, personally, I think, would, would really enjoy this as they get a little bit older. But, yeah, 
especially for children, this will be a good filler game. But I think, as as a general break between other games, this is a fun little filler. So that's Robin by Frederick Moyson. Robin. Stay meddlesome and merry. Mm -hmm. Farewell, Questa. To find out about other productions by the Meddlesome Meeples, then check out our channel or rendezvous with us at meddlesomemeeples.com. Until next time, Questa, farewell and keep thine axe sharp. <laughs>